This is ProBlogger. Hi there, it's Darren from ProBlogger here. Welcome to another episode of the ProBlogger podcast. This is episode 188. For those of you who are new to ProBlogger, ProBlogger is all about helping you to start a blog, to grow your audience of your blog, to create content that's going to change that audience's life, and uh, hopefully to make some money from your blog as well. You can find out more about ProBlogger and what we do at problogger.com. Now, in today's lesson, I want to address a question that I've been getting quite a bit lately, and that is, how do you juggle two blogs, and should you have two blogs? A lot of uh, regular listeners of this podcast know that I do have two main businesses, and they both center around blogs. There's ProBlogger, which you're listening to right now, which is a blog podcast event and numerous other things, and then there's Digital Photography School, which again is a very similar model in, in many ways. It's centered around a blog, and then there's eBooks and courses and other aspects of that business as well. Now, I'm fortunate enough to have been able to build up these two businesses so that either one of them could really be a full-time venture, which is great, but it also presents with some interesting challenges, (laughs) to say the least. Uh, Having two businesses um, comes with benefits, but it also comes at cost. And so in this episode, I want to share with you the story about how I built up these blogs to the point that they're at today, the pros and cons of having more than one blog and, and business. And then for those of you who are considering juggling two businesses like I am, some tips on how to do that and how to approach that if you do decide to do that. You can learn more about this episode. You can listen to it on the show notes and find further reading and a transcript over at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 188. Now, lastly, today's episode is proudly presented by this year's ProBlogger events. This year, we are holding three events over in Australia, Brisbane, Australia, Melbourne, Australia, and a third event in Dallas, Texas in the United States. These events are designed with very similar goals to this podcast to help you to grow your blog uh, with world-changing content, to grow your readership, and to build profit around your blogs. All of these events have some amazing teaching uh, from experienced bloggers like Pat Flynn, who's speaking at our Aussie events, but also we have opportunities for masterminds at all of our events as well. And these help you to really drill down with some experts, with some experienced bloggers to drill down into your business and to really pick apart your business and um, work out how to take it to the next level. So if you're interested in our events, our Australian events, head to problogger.com forward slash events. And if you're interested in coming to our Dallas event, uh, which is in October this year, head over to problogger.com forward slash success. But please don't wait too long uh, on either front because the events are selling out quickly and we do have some early bird pricing on these events that end in the coming weeks. Again, you can find all those details as well as today's show notes at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 188. Without further ado, I'd like to get into today's show. Creating great content, finding an audience, building engagement, monetizing your blog. This is ProBlogger. So today's episode really is inspired by a question that I had over in the Facebook group this week from Sandy. And Sandy wrote to me, uh, you blog on ProBlogger and Digital Photography School. And I have heard that you had many other blogs in days gone by. Can you give me some advice on whether having more than one blog is a good thing or not? Thanks so much for the question, Sandy. I do appreciate it. It is a great question. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, it's one that I'm getting increasingly regularly at the moment. I know a lot of you as bloggers are wondering whether you should have one blog or more than one blog. And so that's really what I want to talk about today. I want to tell you the backstory, the pros and cons of having two focuses, and then some tips on how to juggle two businesses, really, I guess is what we're talking about today. So first, the story. I'm not going to go into great detail, but uh, I guess the first thing I really do want to say is that most people, when they come across me and dig into what I do, see a snapshot of how things are today. Um, Two blogs that are established with thousands of blog posts already in the archives and a decent readership with multiple income streams. That's what you see is the snapshot, but this is just the reality of today. And, And what you don't see is the whole journey of almost 15 years behind what you see today. You know, I guess what you see today is wasn't the reality when I first started. It had to evolve. And really, I guess 
why I want to tell you the story today is that it didn't just arrive like this. It actually was something that evolved over times. And to be honest, it started completely as accident. And it really is not something that I ever planned to be like it is today. So to go back in time, 2002 is when I started my first blog. That first blog's name was The Living Room. And it was a blog about my experience of being involved in a new church as well as many other aspects of my life. It started off as me wanting to tell the story of that church. The church was called Living Room as well. Um, But as I began to blog and as I began to find my voice, I realized that I really enjoyed writing about all kinds of things. So I wrote about life in Australia, politics, television, movies, sport, blogging, photography, um, getting married, um, all of these different things that were going on in my life at that time. It became, I guess, an extension of the different compartments in my brain uh, as I began to talk about these different things. Now, back in 2002, it was very normal to have a blog that covered such a wide spectrum of topics, and that's why I did it. it. It worked. My readers didn't really push back too much on me covering that diverse uh, spectrum, I guess, of, of topics. But gradually over time, and as blogging matured, and as other people began to niche down with their blogs and focus upon specific things, and as my audience, I guess, grew, and different groups in my audience came for different things, I did begin to have some tension on my blog. There were readers who came because they wanted to hear about the church that I was involved with. And they weren't interested in photography. (laughs) They weren't interested in blogging. And then there were other people who began to read that blog, Living Room Blog, because I was writing about blogging. And not many other people were writing about how to make money from blogs at that time. And so those readers really weren't interested in hearing about photography or church. I began to feel this tension. And it began to constrain my blogging in many ways as well, because I began to think, well, I've just written about blogging yesterday. I can't write about it tomorrow. I need to throw in another topic there to serve those other people. And I began to feel constrained. I wasn't really, I didn't really have the freedom, I guess, to to write that blog in, in the way that I wanted to. And so I began to um, take some of the categories of my blog and start new blogs uh, based upon those categories. The first one I did was a camera review blog, which I started late in 2003. It was about a year after I started blogging. It was a blog where I reviewed cameras, and many of you have heard me talk about that blog in the past. So it worked really well. It was actually the first blog that I began to make some money from by putting some AdSense ads on and and referring people over to Amazon with affiliate links. It worked so well that I decided I'm going to start to replicate this. And so I started a camera phone review blog. So this is... uh, a right when those first phones came out with cameras. The Nokia cameras had a little tiny little camera on it. And so I began to do reviews of camera phones. Then I thought, okay, I'm going to do another one on printers. You know, printers kind of related to photography. And so I began to review printers. I think the next one, and I'm kind of a bit fuzzy here about the order of it all, but I did another one on the Olympic Games. I think it might have been Was it the Athens Olympic Games back then? Must have been 2004-ish. And then I started Pro Blogger. That was in 2004, and I definitely remember that one. Uh, And that was where I began to talk about making money from my blogs. I began to share what I was learning about making money from blogs. Now, so at this point, I was already had four or five blogs going, and some of them were making good money. The camera review blog was making good money. The camera phone blog was doing okay. And then Pro Blogger came about, and it completely took off. And it was really about the timing of launching that blog. Um, No one else had a blog about making money from blogging back then. A few people were beginning to explore how to do it, but no one had a complete blog about it. And when I announced that I was making a full-time living from blogging and six figures a year from blogging, that became big news. And a lot of other blogs linked to it, some because they didn't like the idea of people commercializing blogs and other people because that's what they wanted to do. And so ProBlogger had this tipping point Point moment. It was even just a few months into the blog, it, it already had a, a fairly sizable audience and it began to make a little bit of money. Um, and I began to explore different ways of monetizing that blog. It was around this time I also started a, a, my first blog network. It was called the Breaking News Blogs, I think it was. Um, and I did that with some friends over in New Zealand. By 2005, I think I had about 30 blogs, um, uh, including that, that, that network of blogs that, that I was involved with at, at that time. The reality, though, was that only 
three of them were really working very well at all. Um, the camera review blog was doing well. The camera phone blog was doing okay. The Athens Olympic Games blog did really well for the, the two weeks of the Athens Olympic Games, and then it kind of died away. And then there was Pro Blogger. And whilst those blogs were working, there was only really one that I was enjoying. I wasn't really enjoying the camera reviews. I wasn't really enjoying camera phone reviews. I was enjoying Pro Blogger though. And so I decided that I needed to make some changes because I knew I really was going to have to be at this for 10 or so years to you know, do anything significant with blogging. And uh, I thought to myself, I might as well enjoy what I'm doing. And so I decided to make some big changes. Luckily, ProBlogger by this stage was at the point it was starting to make a decent income from it. I was doing some affiliate stuff. I was uh, launching some of my own products. And so I decided to um, focus upon that more and to start killing off some of those other blogs. So the first thing I decided to stop doing with my partners was to stop the breaking news blog network, which freed up a lot of time for me and then enabled me to put more time into ProBlogger and grew ProBlogger even more. And then in 2006, I decided I was going to stop the camera review blog and the camera phone blog. And that was a big risk because those blogs at that point were my main source of income. They, in fact, they were making over $100,000 a year uh, in income, but they were killing me. <laughs> they were soul-sucking kind of blogs to run because I'm not a techie kind of guy. I'm not a review kind of guy. And I was really, I didn't really feel satisfied with the quality of what was going on on those blogs either. And so I decided to transition from being a camera review blog to being a how to take better photos blog, which was something I really was much more passionate about. It was something I was much more interested in. And the other aspect of it is that I knew I could build my audience over time with a how-to blog more than a review blog because people only read review blogs when they're in a buying mode, when they're trying to work out which camera to buy. But people would subscribe to a how to take better photos blog for a longer period of time. So I kind of knew that was a better business model uh, opportunity around a how-to blog. And so I decided to make that switch. Felt risky, but I did have the backup plan of ProBlogger by this stage. It had been going for two years. And I guess that's one of the reasons I want to share this story is that I didn't launch DPS, Digital Photography School, and ProBlogger on the same day. I actually did ProBlogger first. I got it up and running. I got it to a point where it was profitable, which enabled me then to uh, start something new as well. And so that, I guess, is one of the big lessons that I kind of want to get across to you with this story is that you might have two things in mind. You might have two blogs in mind. I would encourage you to really invest into one of them first and to put one of them on the back burner, perhaps for a little while. You might want to get the domain. You might want to reserve some social media accounts, but put it on the back burner and really focus on one thing. I personally find that I'm much better at launching one thing at a time. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of creativity, a lot of thought to to launch something. So don't try and launch them both at the same time. You're listening to Pro Blogger. So 2006 came around and I, I decided to make this switch. To be honest, when I started digital photography school, it was really tough. It was, it was the first year or two of digital photography school. The growth was really slow. It was completely different to ProBlogger. ProBlogger had had this tipping point moment and I'd gone into digital photography school kind of rather naively thinking that I would just be able to grow that blog really quickly and it, it didn't happen. There was no big tipping point day like there had been with ProBlogger. My readers from my original photography blog weren't interested in the new blog and not many of them came across. Um, hardly any of my Pro blogger readers were interested in the new blog. That was too different of a topic, I guess. And so I had to work for those first two years on DPS to really grow the archives up, to write a lot of content, to grow traffic to the blog through writing shareable content, through networking, through writing guest posts, through collaborating with other bloggers, eventually to, to get some traffic in from Google and some other social media sort of sources. Um, Now, I was doing it all myself for those first, uh, particularly for the first year, and most of it for the first two years. I was doing, uh, initially, I was doing all the writing, all the promoting, all the comment moderation, um, and all the partnerships and all the monetization as well. And there were numerous times during that first couple of years of DPS where I I almost gave up because it just wasn't taking as fast as I wanted. There was growth, but it was really slow growth. 
in hindsight, I look back on the stats and I actually see that the growth was steady. And I guess that's the reason that I continued with it is that even though it wasn't spectacular growth, I knew that if I could keep growing that blog by 10% per month or um, even 10% every two or three months, over the long haul, I could see that that would grow to a point where it would um, be a significant amount of traffic and a significant amount of income. So I I kind of tried to take this long-term view all the time knowing that I had ProBlogger already at a point where it was doing reasonably well. Eventually, DPS, Digital Photography School, did grow to a point where it got to the same size as ProBlogger, and then it grew bigger than ProBlogger. It probably took about three years to get to that point where um, Digital Photography School was uh, bigger in terms of traffic and income than ProBlogger, and it continued to grow. To this point, um, I haven't looked at the stats for a few months, but um, Digital Photography School is probably about eight or nine times larger today than ProBlogger, and it's where I put most of my time and resources today. ProBlog is still uh, something that I put a lot of my time into because it's a personal brand, and I'll talk more about that later. Uh, but Digital Photography School is, is where most of the focus of my business goes to. I should say at this point, before I kind of get into some tips, that both DPS uh, and ProBlogger are more than just blogs today. They both started out purely as blogs, but today the blog is at the center of other things. And Digital Photography School today has a range of products around it, eBooks and courses and software. And it's also got a little sister business called Snap and Deals that runs alongside it. So it's more than just a blog. And, and the same is true with ProBlogger. Of course, you're listening to the podcast today, but we also have a job board and, and events as well. So there's lots of moving parts with both of those businesses. And either one of them could be a full-time thing, is a full-time thing in terms of income, but also um, both of them could be quite overwhelming because there are a lot of parts to run. So that's the story. Let me talk a little bit about the pros and cons of having more than one blog or more than one business. Let's start with the good stuff. So the benefits of having multiple blogs. And I've kind of picked on, I picked up on some of these already as I told my story. The first benefit that I would say of having more than one blogs, and, and I guess the reason that I started having more than one blog is that it, it brought a certain amount of freedom to my blogging. You know, one of the reasons I decided to have more than one blog in those early days is that I, I felt like I had something to say on more than one topic. I'm a multi-passionate kind of person. And I know a lot of you as readers and listeners of uh, ProBlogger are in the same boat. I talk to many of you who say you have multi-passions. You, you are interested in travel as well as food, or you're interested in, in technology or science, or you, you have these multiple um, kind of interests. And for me in those early days and, and still today, I have multiple interests. I'm, I'm interested in spirituality. I'm interested in, I'm interested in photography. I was interested in blogging. I was interested in communication. All of these things uh, were things that I wanted to talk about. And to be able to have more than one blog enabled me to do that with more freedom. I didn't have to worry about my readers so much and whether they wanted me to talk about the different topics um, because I, I knew that they could um, just really drill into the blog that they wanted to read rather than have to wade through all the other stuff that they weren't interested in. So I if you're a multi-passionate person, then maybe that is one reason why you might want to have uh, more than one blog. Creating great content and building your audience. This is ProBlogger. Second benefit of having more than one blog from a business perspective is the income diversification. Um, another advantage of having more than one blog, if you're blogging for income, is that by having more than one iron in the fire, it can be a good thing. Um, it can increase the chances of one of them working for you. Um, now, most bloggers know that there are no guarantees that a blog is going to work. There's no formula for a successful blog that will guarantee you're going to have success. Um, and whilst I teach a lot of principles of building successful blogs, there's no guarantees that any of this is going to work or any of it will hit the mark with your readers. Now, I had 30 blogs and two of them really worked. 
and 28 of them didn't. So that kind of gives you some of the kind of chances of having a successful blog. And so having more than one blog, and and my strategy was, okay, I'm going to start lots of blogs and see which one works. And which one works for me as an author, but also which one works for my readers as well. So um, this is one of the reasons that you might want to have more than one blog, to actually have a couple of irons in the fire, to test which one works best, and then to be able to focus upon that I knew really quickly after starting all my blogs whether they had a chance of success. You know, I knew when I started that printer blog that I talked about before that it was not going to work. I knew within a couple of months of starting that blog that it was not getting traction. I got no comments. I got no emails of thanks. I got very little traffic. I knew it wasn't going to work. And I also knew that it wasn't giving me any energy as well. It wasn't something I enjoyed at all. I knew even though digital photography school was slow and it was tough and I felt like giving up at points, I knew it had a good chance of working even after a few weeks of having that blog because I started to get comments. I started to get emails from people going, thank you. I also felt a lot of energy. So having uh, numerous blogs and starting numerous blogs, it was good in that that regard. It showed me what I wanted to do. It, It unveiled my true passions, I guess, but also showed me where uh, my audience was responding in in different ways. So it's good for testing different ideas and and, um, diversifying, I guess, your interests in that way. It also can help in terms of the actual income and diversifying that income as well. Um, Having different income streams on those different blogs, uh, I guess, spread the risk a little bit. So digital photography school in the early days, uh, I monetized it mainly using Google AdSense and a little bit of affiliate marketing on Amazon. Whilst ProBlogger, the income from that was more about eBooks and promoting um, uh, software and and tools. And so they were quite different income streams. Um, and I guess that diversified the risk in, in some ways as well. You know, if AdSense was to go away, I still would have other income streams by having um, those other blogs. And I guess in terms of topics as well, there was some diversification there. By having more than one topic that you're blogging about, if um, one topic was to go away, if blogging, for example, was to be a trend that disappeared after a couple of years, I would still have another topic that hopefully would have sort of an increasing trend as well. And so diversifying, I guess, the topics, the income streams, there can be some benefits of doing that. The other, I guess, benefit for me of having more than one blog is that as an, a multi-passionate person, I tend to get a bit bored if I just have one thing to do. And this is why before I started blogging, I'd had 20 jobs in the last 10 years before my first blog. I was someone who... Yeah, just needed to switch around and needed to try new things. And so having more than one blog enabled me to, you know, switch. Um, And, you know, there's times over the last 10 or so years where ProBlogger has been my passion and there's been other times where digital photography school's been something that I've really sewed myself into and enjoyed. And by having two things to really focus my energy on, I'm, I'm able to, I guess, mix things up, which for me, it keeps my interest and helps me to continue to be passionate as well. So there's some of the benefits, I guess, of having more than one blog. Some of the the, the cons, some of the costs, um, I think you could probably work it out. Um, firstly, um, by having more than one focus, you run the risk of lowering the quality of what you do. At the height of my diversification, when I had 30 blogs going at once and I was creating content for all 30 blogs, I know for a fact that the quality of what I was doing was not great on most of those blogs. In fact, on most of those blogs, it was pretty poor. And I think back and I kind of cringe at what I used to put onto those blogs. I I remember putting press releases up onto my blogs. It was not good content at all. It wasn't personal. It was robotic. It was machine-like. It was formulaic. I was rehashing the news that was being sent to me by camera um, manufacturers and printer manufacturers. It was more about trying to game the search engines and trying to get AdSense clicks than anything else. And, and that was boring for me. And it was also boring for my readers in hindsight. 
And it was never going to lead to a sustainable business because the quality just wasn't there. It wasn't interesting. It wasn't meaningful. It wasn't really that useful to anyone at all. As it turns out, I'm glad I got out of that kind of model because Google has put more and more emphasis onto um, uh, ranking quality content. Back then, you just had to have the keywords in the content, really, and work out how to get a few links to your site. Today, Google's so much better at it, and and same with the social um, networks as well. Um, So for 30 blogs for me, it was never realistic if I wanted to keep the quality up. Even just having two blogs at times has led to me having to, uh, I guess, decrease the quality as well. And and that's been one of the struggles, particularly when I was writing all the content myself on both Pro Blogger and Digital Photography School. I was really aware that by having those two focuses, the quality at times did suffer. And and that is one of the reasons I began to get some help um, in terms of building a team around, uh, around the blogs as well. So having more than one blog, it's something that you've really got to be aware of, and it may be that you have to write less content, but to keep that um, level of quality up uh, again. In terms of another cost, I guess, could be that you not only lower the quality, but you could be lowering the quantity of the blogs. For me, quality is always more important than quantity, but quantity can help as well. And so the re- the way I kept the quality up on both of those blogs was to really pull back on how much content I produced. Um, and that's fine. But um, when you're first starting a blog, like Digital Photography School, one of the ways that you can really grow a blog faster is to produce more content, to, to begin to put more content out there. Because every piece of content on your blog is a new doorway into your site. So you really really aren't able to produce as much if you have more than one blog. I guess the other cost of having more than one blog is the risk of burning out. You know, when I had 30 blogs, I was living a crazy, frantic life. I was working 12 to 14, 15, 16 hours a day just trying to get content up onto all of these different blogs. I was trying to produce content on every blog every day, which just wasn't realistic. Um, and reducing my efforts to just two blogs really helped me a lot in terms of um, work-life balance, and my own health, um, my own passion for what I was doing. But even just having the two blogs, and there's been times where uh, it's been a struggle as well. How to build and monetize your blog. This is Pro Blogger. There's some of the costs, I guess, risk of burning out, the risk of lowering quality, the risk of lowering quantity, and all of these things can have an impact upon uh, whether the blog has a chance of working as well. In terms of tips that I want to give you, kind of move into now, uh, some of the, the things that I would encourage you to do, if you if you really do have these two passions and you really do want to explore having two different businesses, I think it can work. I've made it work. Um, I do sometimes wonder whether... Um, if I just focus on one of them where I built something bigger and that's something that I, possibly the answer would be yes if I if I just done pro blogger could I have built pro blogger into a, a better thing for my readers for me um, it's same with digital photography school if I didn't have pro blogger could I have built digital photography school into something bigger as well I, I think the answer would have been yes I probably would have built bigger businesses but I'm also someone who's kind of fine with that because big isn't everything for me. I don't want to be a multi, multi, multi millionaire. I don't want to have a business with a hundred employees. I, I kind of like small and I, I think I can do something meaningful on both fronts um, for my myself, but also for my readers. And so I guess really you've got to do some analysis on what's your ultimate goal. Do you want to be a multi million dollar company or do you want to just build something small that's meaningful that sustains your life and for me it's the latter and so that's probably the first tip i give you is is really think through what are your goals if you want to build something massive if you want to build something like tesla or google then you probably want to just pick one thing and really go after that thing But if you're happy to have uh, something smaller, something that's sustainable perhaps, and you want to explore different passions in your life, then maybe two things is one. So firstly, consider what it is that you're trying to achieve, what it is that is your goal, what it is that's your your dream. Secondly, if you really do want to explore two things, uh, as I mentioned before, spread out the launches. Don't launch two things at once. I've talked to a number of people who've done this. It's possible 
but you've probably got much better chance of both of them working if you spread things out. Um, for me, the reason I told you my story earlier is that I wanted to show you that things were spread out. I started blogging in 2002, spent two years really learning the skills. I started Pro Blogger in 2004 after I had the skills, after I'd had some experience. I started Digital Photography School in 2006. So it was really two years after Pro Blogger that I started it. Now, there were other things that I started in the midst of it, but I think the reason that Digital Photography School worked is that even though I had that idea when I started ProBlogger, I could have done it in 2004 in terms of an idea, but I really allowed myself to get ProBlogger established first, which meant I didn't have as much pressure on me to make digital photography school work straight away. I didn't have to make an income from that blog straight away because I already had ProBlogger up and running. Um, so spread out your launches if you can. Um, give yourself a period of time where you can just focus upon one thing to get it established, to make it operate as a business, to be able to build some systems and procedures and, and to build a team so that, that that first thing can run relatively independently so that you can then give a lot of your attention to that new thing. The next tip I'll give you is to build a team. Um, now, I did okay at launching both Digital Photography School and ProBlogger with largely just me working on, on those businesses. Um, but I learned very quickly that I could only really scale those businesses to the point where the, that I was willing to let go and bring others into what I was doing. And this is probably the topic for a whole other episode is how to build a team. But for me, it uh, initially meant bringing on some other writers my first writers were guest writers, and then I began to build a team of paid writers. Uh, it then um, also meant getting some administrative support, so getting someone in. I think the, the first person I actually hired was to do comment moderation. And then I got someone to help me with some email and customer support. Um, I've hired people to help me with t design and tech, and then also some more managerial type roles. So I've got someone working for me at the moment who helps me produce new products and do biz dev. Again, this is not something that just appeared. <laughs> this is something that really evolved. And the first hire, that comment moderator, I think they were earning like $10 a day for you know 10 minutes of work. It was, it was really tiny kind of stuff. And it's gradually grown over time. Now, today, I'm fortunate enough to have an amazing uh, little team uh, of seven or eight people who I talk to most days. And they help me with different aspects of the business. They're all part-time, but they all do things that either free up my time so that I can do what I do best and I don't have to answer emails or I don't have to um, moderate comments or, or do these things that they can do. So they're either freeing up my time or they're doing things that I I could probably do, but they could do it better than me. So editing this podcast, the team at Podcast Motor helped me to edit this podcast. Um, they do a much better job. They do it faster than me, which frees up my time, but they also do it at a higher quality. And so I've, that's really the kind of hires that I make. They either free up my time and free up my mind space, or they uh, have skills that I, I just don't have. Keep in mind, all of these hires didn't just happen. They were all tiny hires in the early days. Uh, some of them actually started as me bartering services, um, and giving exposure, that type of thing, and then growing uh, in that relationship. You're listening to Pro Blogger. While I'm also talking about team, I guess the other thing I would say about teams, and this is something that's become more important to me over the last couple of years, um, if you do have two businesses and you've got teams, you probably in the early days will have team members who are working on both of the businesses. So um, to give you an example, uh, Jasmine, who today manages Digital Photography School. Uh, Jasmine actually for a while there was working on both sides of the business. She was producing and I hired her to help me produce products for Digital Photography School. But she was also working on the ProBlogger event and helping to manage that. She was doing an amazing job of both of those things and did really well. But one of the things that we've tried to do with the business over the last little while is to separate the teams out. And this is something you probably won't be able to do in the early days, but there are some real benefits of being able to have different people on your team to focus on different aspects of, of the different businesses. The problem with having people working on both of your businesses, if you've got two businesses, is that there will be times where they will feel torn between the two businesses in terms of what they should be focusing their time on. And you will as well. And so this is one of the things that we've really worked on over the last year or so. We now have two separate teams. I 
work on both of the businesses, but all my team members work on, on different aspects of the business except for our developers, and our developers are kind of working on both aspects of it. And again, that's got some costs. There's some tension there at times. But I, I think that's certainly been something that's re- been really beneficial for us to have different people working on, on different parts of the business. The last two things I'll say, uh, second last thing I'll say is to think really carefully when you're launching your businesses about how much personal branding you put into the businesses. Now, one of the best things that I ever did was to make Digital Photography School a non-personally branded site. Digital Photography School, if you go and have a look at it today, you'll find it really hard to find many references to me. My name is not really on that site much at all. It's on the About page, I think, as the founder. I occasionally will write a blog post if it's a more of a sales-type blog post, but the content, 99% of the content is written by a team of writers. The editor is someone else, not me. I'm really not there at all. It's not a personally branded site. The benefits of that is that I don't need to really do much to keep that site running. In the early days, I did it all. But I've, I, even in those early days, I didn't really promote myself. Um, I promoted the brand Digital Photography School. It wasn't really a Darren thing. And I knew that that would enable, enable me to scale it and to get others involved in that. And so right from day one, I, I knew I wanted to have other people writing most of the content on that site. I knew I just wasn't going to be able to invest heavily, heavily in it for all eternity because I had ProBlogger, which is much more personally branded. Again, if you look at ProBlogger, you see my face on the front page. You see videos of me everywhere. You see my name on a lot of places. I'm the voice of this podcast, and it's much more um, personally branded. And as a result of that, there's a lot more that I have to do to keep ProBlogger running. Now, I Um, I'm committed to that. I enjoy it, and so that's not a problem. But if you had two personally branded sites, that's going to be tough. That's going to be really tough. So I'd encourage you, if you are going to do two things, maybe consider making one of them or both of them non-personally branded if you can, because it will enable you to scale things a lot bigger. It will enable you to be less involved in the day-to-day running of, of one or both of those businesses. Can really help a lot. It will also help you if you eventually do want to sell what you do. Now, I think I would have a much better chance of selling digital photography school one day than ProBlogger. ProBlogger, I, th- I think, could be saleable as well, but th- there would probably be conditions that I would have to hang around uh, because my, uh, my name is associated with that brand a lot more. So um, think carefully about your personal branding. This is ProBlogger. The last thing I'll say is um, one of the things that's helped me a lot is to really work on my routines and batching what I do. And I've talked about batching in the past. Um, One of the biggest challenges that I face, um, having to have my head across both of my businesses, even though I've got digital photography school to a point where it almost runs itself in many regards, there are deadlines that loom for me every week on both of those blogs. Um, And it can be hard when you're involved in the day-to-day of of two different businesses to keep track of what you're supposed to be doing at, at any given time, particularly when you've got a personality type like me, which isn't the most organized um, type person. I'm, I'm not great at diaries and these types of things. And so it's an area that I've really had to work on uh, and I've had to build routines. And I've, I've talked in previous episodes about my, my routines, but you know, like Tuesday afternoons for me is the time that I create the ProBlogger Plus newsletter. Thursday afternoons, um, until about a year ago, I always did the Digital Photography School newsletter. So I separated those two things out onto different days. Uh, today, DPS1 gets done by a team member. Now, Monday afternoons, I record this podcast. I know every Monday afternoon I'm, I'm recording this podcast. It's Monday afternoon right now. Wednesday is the day that we have our DPS team meetings. Uh, Friday is when we have our ProBlogger team meetings. So actually having these rhythms, these routines to your week actually enables you to remember when your deadlines are and to create a rhythm that helps you to be productive as well. It also helps your team when you do build a team to know what it is that you're working on. My team knows that Wednesdays is DPS team meetings. And so if they've got something they want to ask me, they can 
and just hold off until Wednesday morning um, when we have that if, if it's a non-urgent thing. So they're not pinging me all week. They're, they're putting things onto the agenda for, for that particular time. Conversely, the ProBlogger team knows that Wednesdays is a time that I spend more thinking about DPS and so they don't tend to annoy me as much on, on that about the things that are associated with ProBlogger and, and vice versa. So the more you can set up those sorts of rhythms where you um, focus upon different aspects of your business, um, the better. And that's good for you, but it's also good for your team as well. All right, they're my tips um, and um, some of the pros and cons of building two different businesses simultaneously. I don't know that I've got all the answers on this particular front, but I hope that somewhere in what I've shared today is some wisdom that um, you can um, apply to your particular business. If you've got anything that you would like to add to this conversation, I would love to hear it because I'd love to learn from you. Uh, It's a completely selfish request. Let me know what you found to be useful for you if you've got two businesses. You can do that over on the comments at problogger.com dot com forward slash podcast forward slash one eight eight or you can head over to the ProBlogger Facebook group. Uh, just go to problogger.com forward slash group and you'll find the group. We'll forward you over to that particular uh, Facebook group where we've got, I think it's all, uh, just over 3,500 members now interacting with each other every week and, and discussing the episodes but also sharing uh, the tips that we've been picking up on, on blogging as well and we're keeping each other a bit accountable to what we do in our blogs as well. That's problogger.com forward slash group. We'll take you straight to that Facebook group where you can let me know what you think about today's episode. Lastly, if you've got a moment, head over to iTunes and leave us a review if you haven't already. I love getting those reviews means a lot to me, helps me to actually uh, stay on track and, and to uh, create podcasts that really do serve you. So if you've got any any reviews that you want to leave, um, head over to iTunes or your favorite podcast network to do that as well. And I look forward to chatting with you in next week's episode, episode 189 of the Pro Blogger podcast. You've been listening to Pro Blogger. If you'd like to comment on any of today's topics or subscribe to the series, Find us at problogger.com forward slash podcast. Tweet us at problogger. Find us at facebook.com forward slash problogger or search problogger on iTunes. Before I go, I want to give a big shout out and say thank you to Craig Hewitt and the team at Podcast Motor who've been editing all of our podcasts for some time now. Podcast Motor have a great range of services for podcasters at all levels. They can help you to set up your podcast, but also offer a couple of excellent services to help you to edit your shows and get them up with great show notes. Check them out at podcastmotor.com.